Alrighty, y'all, welcome back to the Complete Husband's Handbook Podcast. My name is Daniel, and this week we're going to be looking at the quote-unquote plan. Now, most people have a plan, what they want to do when they get out of high school, college, career, marriage, relationships, all that stuff. But no one ever really focuses on the plan, or if they do, they're... They're kind of deemed as, you know, anal, or maybe even OCD. You know, I have to be married by this time, to have kids by this age, to have a career by this age, and, you know, all that is well and good. But as you know, the past two years have told us, or shown us, plan doesn't always go as pl- as as we hope. Now, we can hope to marry somebody, or hope that, you know, we can finish college before we get married, or, you know, we hope a relationship goes all the way and it doesn't. But I guess the first question would be is, do we really need a plan? Not just, you know, hopes and dreams, but a plan. And I would have to say, in my own humble humble opinion, yeah, you need a plan. What do you want out of life? What do you want to do? What do you want your hobbies to be? What kind of person do you want to date and marry? What do you want when you're 40 or when you're 50 or when you're 60? What do you want to be doing? Do you want to be working? Do you want to retire? And then once you have your plan, kind of what are you doing to get to that plan? Now, when we're single, everyone's kind of making money, you know, throwing it here and there. We're buying a bunch of useless crap that really just has no value. It has depreciating value, which means that, you know, for those of you who don't know, for what we bought it, we can't turn around and sell it for more. We'll end up selling it for for, for less. Someone told me once the best way to learn about depreciating value is to go buy a college book walk outside the college bookstore, walk back in, and try to sell it back to them at the same price. It won't happen. So, we really need to start planning now, when we're younger. For those of you who are single, and, you know, in college, or really starting your careers now, take this to heart. Start planning now. Start planning for your future now. Learn how to invest, learn what to invest in, learn how to watch the market. Not necessarily become a stockbroker, but know about finances, just general terms. There's a lot of good books on those. We're going to be looking at one for the Complete Husband's Handbook Podcast Book Club. But learn about it so people don't, you know, take you for a ride and take your money. Now, I'm married, obviously, (laughs) but the plan my wife and I had whenever we first got married is not what the plan is today. When we first got married, I was working corporate security, and my wife was working at a daycare. If you had told us both, whenever we first got married, she would be a published author with several books under her belt. And I would spend the majority of, of my adult life in, in logistics instead of security. I probably would have, would have laughed at your face. But, you know, things change. And they always will. So planning with your spouse is always important. Regardless of whatever your quote-unquote personal plan is with work or with school or education or hobbies or skill sets or whatever the case may be, share your plan with your spouse. You know, this is January. It's the first of the year. Everyone's saying, you know, hey, I've got these plans, my resolutions, hashtag best life, all that other stuff most people throw away by Valentine's Day. But Having constant communication with your spouse is the key to good planning. Because 
they feel like they're validated with offering their points of view and maybe you can learn something for them because they've been through some stuff or maybe you can help them out with their plans that's why being married is so important is because it's just not you you don't get tunnel vision you have someone else there to help you either either look at the bigger picture focus on the picture in the frame or focus on those small details that make the artwork just stunning and that's what this plan is that's why the plan is so important planning with your wife or your husband depending you know really talking to them because their plans and your plans may not be the same but constant communication is the key my wife and i have what i would call a little quote-unquote planning sessions every week now for those of you who have kids that might be a bit more difficult depending on on the age but you know we'll talk for a good hour hour and a half two hours about kind of what we feel what's happening what's going on and not just with us but with things outside of our marriage that affect us whether it's inflation whether it's gas prices whether it's the industries i've worked in or she's worked in you know everything that could come into play that could affect us we talk about those things we know how each other kind of feel about it one way or another or just indifferently but bringing in as much information as we can so that we can make informed decisions and again as things change we adapt accordingly now up until this point we we thought we would have had kids um, we never would have expected that uh i guess i'll get personal for a moment um, it's becoming increasingly difficult on my side <laughs> to get that done. Um, I've been to a couple of doctors and it just hasn't, uh, cause this was pre COVID, but, um, we don't quite know what to do, but the plan was to always have kids. And, of course, my wife wants kids, I want kids, and it's it's important for us to have kids. We want to have a family. Um, and so that's changed. That's changed the plan. That's changed how, how we look at things. And, you know, putting that into effect or adding that to the plan, I guess you could say, um, using that those those points of views um, are are helpful whenever you're planning for the future and what we want versus what would end up happening and there are a lot of long tearful talks about children and hoping for kids should we adopt versus should we try, you know, a medical procedures um, and the time and the money it takes to do that? And it's it's not something most men like to talk about. <laughs> um, and I'll do a podcast on that later. But again, that's a very real thing that needs to be talked about. Um, about the plan and what you know we want out of life and what we hope versus what what uh ends up happening now um with all that in mind what goals do you and your spouse have to make your particular plans a reality you know finishing college or getting a better career or advancing in your career all of those things take, you know, daily goals, weekly goals, monthly, yearly, things like that. Um, and so you really need to look at what are the steps that need to be taken, number one, to achieve your goals. Number two, can you and your spouse do them? 
and wholeheartedly get behind it. My uh, family member of mine uh, worked really hard to gain rank in, in his particular career. And unfortunately, that meant a lot of studying, a lot of book learning, a lot of taking tests, a lot of devouring a, a crap ton of technical information. And that meant that, that any time spent at home, he would be studying in a room by himself, because that's how he studied the best. And that takes a toll on a marriage because when you're home you know you want to spend time with your spouse which is what's needed so you know talking with your spouse about your goals making sure they're okay with them truly okay with them not going along because you've got you know this wild out idea but really looking at it is it feasible if it costs money can we afford to do it if you have to take out loans or borrow money, how are we going to pay them back? Once you're done with this, does it help with the career path? Does it help bring money home? Um, and just different things like that. E even vacationing, which I highly recommend that everyone do at least once a year. Um, it takes planning. It takes knowing what's available, knowing how to get there. And, and, and all those things, and believe it or not, planning is fun, depending on what kind of what you're planning. Um, it can be fun. It can be enjoyable. And so don't, don't look at planning with a sense of dread. Look at it with a sense of wonder. Yes, there are some things that are going to be tough to talk about, but I promise you, as you and your spouse plan together, you learn more about them, and they learn more about you. Now, there's a, I don't know if it's an old saying, but it's a saying I like to use. When you plan for the worst and hope for the best, all the surprises are good ones. Well, if there's any truth to that, <laughs> I don't know, but it sounds good, right? And so, you know, plan for the worst. You know, have your plan to get from A to B. But look at anything that could potentially go wrong. Not to stop you from achieving your goals, but to plan accordingly. There's a TV show I love to watch called Leverage. My wife and I both love it. And the mastermind, um, he was teaching one of the other crew members about being the one who has to come up with the plan. And he said, the first plan I deal with is the quick and dirty plan. The get in, get out, nothing elaborate. I start with that plan. And then I go from there. And that's how we really need to look at it. You know, what, what do we want? How do we plan? What are any contingencies or any, you know, one point? whatever plans we need to put in place so that if anything happens we already know hey we got this we're good so that if there are any surprises odds are they're good surprises the plan becomes achieved whether that's for you or your spouse things come in they're awesome and it betters you even if even if the plan doesn't happen, you've still spent time together planning and learning and spending time, getting to know each other better. And that in and of itself is a success. Is a success. I guess the last part of this, and probably the most important, and <laughs> probably the most scary, is trust in your spouse to make the plan work. Micromanaging a marriage is not a good idea. In fact, that's probably a quick way to get divorced. <laughs> but trust in your spouse. To say, hey, here's what I need you to do. Or if they sit tell us, hey, can you do this? Do it. 
And not only will that affirm their confidence in us, but it'll help you grow together as a couple. And these are things everyone knows, but very few people realize. <laughs> that it's not the big, grand gestures of it all. You know, the the birthdays, the Christmases, the diamonds and the sparklies and the whatever. It's the day-to-day -day things we do that both help with the plan so that we can achieve our goals, but also that builds a strong and lasting marriage. And that's really what, what we want here. We want you, I say we, but I want you to have the best marriage you can. I want you to be the best man, the best husband you can. So that your friends, your family, your spouse, if you've got kids, your kids, that they can look at you as an example of how best to take on this mad, crazy world and build their relationships based on what you have. I'll thank you for spending this time with me, and I look forward to seeing you all next time.